Good morning. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3. Well, it's looking pretty good, <laughs> good, that here in America, the Jesuits have selected Joe Biden as the president of the United States. It's not 100% sure, but it's most likely going to be the case. Every single one of you, my countrymen, get ready. No time for messing around. I don't have much in my bank. But today, uh, one of the many things that uh, needs to be done today is that I'm going out to my bank and withdrawing the pittance that I have in there. Um, uh, <laughs> just getting everything out of the bank right now. Um, but be prepared, brethren, those of you who are in America. You watch, you watch, very soon, things are going to start falling apart. Not that, not that it would be much different if Trump were elected, or excuse me, selected, but no, no. Get ready. Something's going to happen to where Joe Biden isn't going to be fit to run the country into the ground, so to speak. You watch. Biden is going to endure for but a little while. Then whatever it is, something is going to happen. And then Kamala Harris, a woman who happens to be black, is going to be set up as the president of the United States of America. You watch, brethren. You watch. You watch. And hey, if later today it comes out that Trump was selected, <laughs> You watch. Zephaniah chapter 3. Doctrinally, dispensationally, written about the Jewish people onto the Jewish people under the dispensation of the law. But all things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Romans 15 4. Okay. Now remember. Doctrinally, dispensationally, this does not apply to us. Remember that. This is instruction in righteousness, brethren. Zephaniah chapter 3. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. Now, America is not a city, okay? You can tie this in to uh, Mystery Babylon, you know, Rome, Roman Catholicism, okay? You can tie that into her, you know, the Mother Church. But for our instruction and in righteousness, you, my countrymen, America is filthy and polluted and oppresses. <laughs> you just wait. Filthy, polluted, with the pornography epidemic. A 
abortion, sodomite marriages, calling evil good and good evil. She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to her God. Again, in context, this is about the Jews. But America was scarcely a godly nation. There is very much arguments that could be made for the inception of America. But the love, the worship, and fear of the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, does not exist in America. Only in the church of the living God, those of us who are truly saved, sealed, born again. Okay? Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. Hello, America. They gnaw not the bones till the morrow. They take everything they can get. And they're not satisfied with your flesh, blood. Kind of like the Jesuits. They go after your families. They don't just want, they don't want just you. They want all that's associated. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons, spirit, soul, and body. Just believe. Oh, a latter, the latter rain is coming upon us. <laughs> Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. And amen. The Jesuit priests have done violence to the laws of America, to your nation, doesn't matter. This is their hour in the power of darkness, brethren. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. Church of the living God. He who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, church of the living God, be taken out of the way. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not. But the unjust knoweth no shame. Every single one of you, you fakes, you infiltrators, you coadjutors, you wannabes, you have no shame whatsoever. You have no fear of God, and you have no shame. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their street waste. Their streets waste. That none passeth by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man. That there is none inhabitant. I said, surely thou wilt fear me. Thou wilt receive instruction. So their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever I punished them. But they rose early and corrupted all their doings. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nation that I may assemble the kingdom to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Bringing in together all the nations at the Battle of Armageddon. He's going to pour out his fury. And just speak. Destroys them all just like that. <clears throat> For
For when I will turn to the people, for then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Calling upon the name of the Lord. And these heretics say, oh, that's just for the Jews. It's just for the Jews. No, you twits. And I'm using charity when I say that. It crosses dispensational lines. You fools. You serpents. You blind guides. Strain at a gnat. Swallow a camel. <laughs> Uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, humbling yourself before the Lord. And calling upon his name. The ultimate shoe of humility. Which not one single solitary one of you. Easy believism heretics has. It's all fake. Fame. A facade. Under. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the scripture saith. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Crosses dispensational lines there, you twits. Go back now to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 10, From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering, referring unto the Jews. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in, the, in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Talking about the future restoration of the children of Israel. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Again, prophecy to be fulfilled within the future concerning the children of Israel. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Judah. The Lord hath taken away thy judgment. He hath cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. The millennial reign, when Jesus Christ, God our Father, is ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. The king will be upon his throne. <clears throat> In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear, not, fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. For the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. 
Again, restoration for the Jewish people. At that time I will bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. During the time of Jacob's trouble, which is rapidly approaching. Hmm. During that time, at some point, the Jewish people are going to turn unto the Lord. At some point. Hmm. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so, come Lord Jesus. But I want to also read a portion of scripture onto you. One second, I'm going to have to pause this. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, verses 28 on the verse, uh, let's, uh, 26 on the verse 31. Luke 23, verses 26 on the verse 31. Or, yeah, verse 26 on the verse 31. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Shimon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country. And on him, they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? <clears throat> mountains fall on us and cover us during the time of Jacob's trouble. He's warning about the time of Jacob's trouble, but for our instruction in righteousness, brethren. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in a dry? While things were going good here in America, the depravity of the Jesuit-led government was at a very high, very, very despotic low, you could say. But now, when everything is dry, when this nation is crippled, and very soon coming upon financial collapse, you're going to see things, brethren, that you never thought Whatever happened to any of us here in this nation? Are you ready? Some people will say, well, the Constitution, the Constitution. The Constitution, because of the Trading with the Enemy Act, okay, because we are under executive authority, you know, with the gold fringes around our American flags, the Constitution can be circumvented for the common good, okay? Our American Constitution is a guideline, not a binding contract. Now, Joe Biden is in no wise the sun perdition. <laughs> And neither is that macaroni guy. What's his name? That 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 twit that uh, that whack job Grider keeps talking about. He's not. No, he's not the son of a bitch. No. Hmm. Brethren, 
to all of you, my American countrymen. Biden, you, you watch. Something's going to happen. Something is going to happen. And Biden will not be uh, able to be fit to rule America. And they're going to put in that woman who just happens to be black, who's going to feed off the sensibilities of the Black Lives Matter. And we are going to begin to see devastation in our streets, uh, even more so than ever before. They're going to come for our guns, perhaps. Forced vaccinations. Not forced, but if you don't, then we're going to take this, 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 this. You don't have to. Mm. This is where this is where the rubber meets the road, brethren. You've stood for the scriptures, the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Are you ready to make this stand, brethren? Are you ready to make this stand? When is it exactly coming? Uh, I mean, I don't know. But it's just right at the doorstep, brethren, sisters. And we need to be prepared. We don't got time to mess around, see. We ain't got time to mess around. <clears throat> Proverbs. Chapter 1, verses 10, on to verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill, we shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. And also, today is the fourth. Did you read the fourth proverb today at least? <clears throat> Proverbs 4, verses 23 and verse 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Look not, let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left hand. Remove thy foot from evil. Brethren, sisters, you need to examine yourself right now. You need to examine yourselves, prove your own selves, whether you be in the faith. I'm not saying about, you know, questioning your salvation, but um, again, not, not one of us thought we would see what is going to be soon coming. Watch. You watch. You watch. 
watch. Prepare yourself. Be prepared. Be ready. Trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3. <clears throat> Verses 5 on to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and, de and depart from evil. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. I'm using the set of scriptures that was given me as a gift. <clears throat> Second Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 10. Second Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 10. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We're going to see some crazy stuff. But remember, God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but unto salvation. Okay. Be caught up, which is coming soon. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, brethren, especially now. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, making reference to the works of the law, he is, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. What is that? What is that? Romans chapter 1. Got to read this. Romans chapter 1 Romans chapter 1 verses 16 on to verse 17 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. And you come on to that by repentance, turning away from yourself and turning on to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You come to him broken of yourself. You believe on him, what he did for you on that cross, and you call out in the greatest shoe of humility of your own brokenness, and you call upon the name of the Lord. Be prepared, brethren. Be prepared. Today, for example, I, I like I said, I got to go out and go to the bank and uh, take some drastic action here. But I'm also going to be tracking today because the weather is very favorable. Got to 
to take every opportunity we can get. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And also, beloved brethren, let us not forget. Let us not forget. First Timothy. Not Thessalonians, bread. First Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. That there is none good, no, not one. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Don't be afraid. We knew this was going to come. And it is rapidly approaching. Rapidly approaching, brethren, is what I want to say. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Breakfast is ready. Brethren, that's going to be it for this video. As you heard, my wife has prepared breakfast. Got another video coming later today, Lord willing, that a brother helped me with. A very, very pertinent video. Lord willing, if not today, then tomorrow. But I wanted to make this really quick video for you, brethren. Years on. I trust in the Lord. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.